well here we are down on the farm or to be precise in my garden <laughs> and uh, that's a pretty logical place to have these three four-wheel drive vehicles three off-roaders from three different parts of the world we've got the Sangyong Corando from Korea we've got the Daihatsu Terios from Japan and we've got the good old-fashioned well perhaps not old-fashioned but you know what I mean the good old-fashioned Jeep Grand Cherokee 5.9 this one's built actually in Austria although you might think of it as an American car completely different engines got a 1.3 litre in the little uh, Terios here 2.3 litres in the Corando and a whopping 5.9 litre V8 I tell you that engine that uh, that engine is actually quite hot, I can feel the heat coming through that bonnet there. Different price ranges as well, huge price difference between these cars, as you might expect I suppose. Talking about 18 grand-ish for the uh, Corando, 12 and a half grand for the Terios. Interesting price for this little car, this is the surprise so far in appearance terms. And if you haven't got 40,000 pounds in your bin, don't even think about the Grand Cherokee. Oh, enough talking, let's see how they drive. Well, this is an interesting one, the Sangyong Corando. Sangyong means double dragon in Korea, and Corando is an abbreviation of Korea Can Do. Can you believe that? What a terrible name for a car. But anyway, it's actually, I think, a very nice car to look at from the outside. It was designed by Professor Ken Greenlee from the Royal College of Arts, uh, probably one of Britain's most respected car designers. He's also a tutor, but... Uh, what he did was went out to Seoul on a, on a sort of day-to-day -day basis really and designed this car for the Koreans because they recognise talent when they see it. And it's a shame that a bloke like that can't get a job in Britain. Anyway, that's another story. This thing has got a 2.3 litre engine, does well, develops about 140 brake horsepower, they say. Can't believe it myself, it doesn't feel like a 140 horsepower engine to me. 103 miles an hour, 0 to 60 in 14 and a half seconds. An asking price of about 17,950 for this 2.3 litre petrol version, which does of oh, the order of 28 mpg. Looks great, like I said. Not too sure about the build quality. Koreans have yet to prove themselves in that department, and I don't like this interior. listen to that would you that is 5.9 liters of v8 detroit engine pumping away under the bonnet of this grand cherokee sorry for that less than smooth maneuver this grand cherokee lx the 5.9 liter version which has just gone on sale or about to go on sale the most powerful off-roader in the world probably production off-roader anyway and it makes uh, anything that uh, Range Rover or anybody else produce up in uh, Birmingham look pretty silly, actually. This is an awesome piece of kit. 237 brake horsepower, 125 miles an hour, 0 to 60 in 7.5 seconds. Cost you about, uh, oh, if you haven't got 40,000 quid in your bin, don't even think about it. And don't, whatever you do, don't think about what this thing will do to the gallon because it doesn't, uh, well, I asked somebody, you know, what it does to the gallon and the reply was, it drinks. Uh, it drinks something of the order of 12 mpg. Just think about that. You won't get much more than 12 miles to the gallon out of this car. But really, it's the ultimate. I mean, you know, you get what you pay for, and you pay a lot for this car, and you get probably the best off-roader in the world. It only comes in left-hand drive, unfortunately. But uh, if I had 40 grand, it would be on my shopping list. Well, if you're wondering what that funny little noise, and it is a funny little noise, if you're wondering what it is, it's the reversing, reverse gear on this little Daihatsu Terios, which is a funny little car. And it's a funny little company. And they're funny little people at that company, believe me. I've been out to Osaka in Japan, where they make the uh, little Daihatsu Terios, and they are a funny old lot. It's a weird old place. Most car manufacturers are in or around Tokyo, 
a soccer break the mold and they're out in the sticks in the, in a soccer and um, well they're weird but I tell you they might be weird but they've come up with a great little car here this is a 1.3 litre 16 valve engine in this Terios 82 brake horsepower it's big, that's powerful enough for a car like this 91 miles per hour top speed we've got the 0 to 60 time of around 16 seconds and this is the good bit I think you'll agree 12,200 pounds for this car and it'll do something like 38.7 mpg and this is the other great thing unlike the other two cars that we've been driving today this one has got permanent four-wheel drive no pressing buttons no pulling handles it decides when there's ice on the road or snow on the road and four-wheel drive needs to come into play and it does it all for you and I tell you another thing that's quite incredible considering it's so small it's got more leg room this car than that Sangyong Corando and that's saying something and it's less of a roly-poly ride as well well here we are back on the farm we've had a pretty amazing day driving around this place and uh, on the surrounding roads and uh, it's given us a good chance to evaluate all three of these off-roaders I mean it's stupid to compare them and try and uh, pick a, a winner and a loser out of these three because they're in an entirely different league all three of them entirely different prices so uh, let's start with the most expensive first the 5.9 litre V8 remember this is a car that has to be governed because it wants to go quicker than 125 miles an hour and those very responsible people of Chrysler are saying let's limit that uh, top speed of this car and uh, make it a little bit slower but 125 miles an hour quick enough for me I can tell you and it's got to be the best four-wheel drive vehicle in the world what you're looking at here is the ultimate 4x4 four four. Uh, you know if we're talking about production vehicles available in Britain this is better than the top of the line Range Rover better than the top of the line anything else that's on the market can't go wrong with this car and you know an awful lot of car for quite a lot of money it has to be said this one at the other end of the scale the little Daihatsu Terios when I first saw it well I wasn't too sure it looks a bit like a hairdresser's car to me if you know what I mean and uh, though the more I drive it and the more I look at it the more it appeals to me great little city car great second family car nice little 4x4 facility it's got this interesting little feature beneath the luggage area there there's a footwell where you can chuck in your dirty old wellies or wetsuits or whatever wet things you want to chuck under the floor of your luggage compartment the other great little thing about this car is that it's got permanent four-wheel drive none of this nonsense of pulling levers as you have to with the Jeep uh, to put the thing into four-wheel drive or pressing buttons or anything like that this one decides for you when you need the four-wheel drive and when it should come into play so ironically the cheapest of the lot in many respects has the most sophisticated four-wheel drive system although don't get confused this is not a mud plugger uh, this is not a serious off-roader this is a sport utility vehicle let's call it that which means that it's uh, for pretty light off-road work unlike the Grand Cherokee of course this one confuses me slightly the Sangyong Corando I don't know I like the job that Ken Greenlee my old mate Professor Ken Greenlee as he is now sorry sir uh, I love the styling job he's done on this but uh, some lovely little touches look at this this rear wheel and the, and the lights and the wings and everything some very nice touches indeed don't like the driving of this car I don't like the roly-poly effect that the they allege does not exist but uh, when you're out driving it let me tell you it throws you around a little bit what I don't like is the tacky interior of this car and worst of all worst of all and I hope I never see it again that dashboard it's got this horrible wooden dashboard that looks like my grandma's old mahogany wardrobe been chopped up and installed in a sangyong yuck